Good morning all. It is uh, Thursday morning. Headed out for a work commute on the Cub. Had an odd couple of days uh, fighting uh, crypto malware and ransomware and whatnot for one of my customers. So didn't have much time for vlogging the last couple of days. I, I spent uh, 30, 39 hours over the last uh, 48 hours uh, fighting bugs. <laughs> but we kicked it. We got it. We killed it. So now I'm off to another site that's been waiting on me for a couple of days and uh, see if I can do some good elsewhere. So I don't know if I mentioned it or not. I think I did in my last ride vlog that hasn't been posted yet. Um, I did receive the GV screen finally. It was lost at the post office here in the United States. Um, in La La Land, uh, they didn't give me a uh, attempted delivery tracking notice, anything like that, and the seller never provided any uh, tracking details with the uh, eBay shipment, so nobody had anything to go off of. So eBay refunded my purchase, uh, and then that next day, I uh, just happened to be over at the post office, and I stopped and said, uh, hey, do you have anything that's lost for me? And uh, they went back and searched, and after about, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes, they came back and said, yeah, is this yours? <laughs> uh, yes, yes it was. Would have loved to have had that six weeks ago. But, uh, hopefully if the weather permits this weekend, I will uh, change out this uh, short visor and put on the uh, GV, which should be considerably taller, but I don't know how well it's going to work. Uh, a few other uh, owners have mentioned that they tried that on theirs and it caused too much buffeting, too much uh, turbulence right at the helmet height, so it might not be a great fit. <sighs> so what else is new in uh, Quasi's world? Uh, my wife and toddler are in Brazil for the month of July. They won't be back until early August, so I'm trying to uh, keep track of the other two rugrats, uh, my son and my daughter, my middle child, my first daughter, and uh, they're bored at home all day while I'm out working, but uh, hopefully maybe this next week we'll have some time to take a little uh, short vacation or something go somewhere uh, do something entertaining better than just sitting around the house we haven't had a vacation in a couple of years since uh, our youngest joined the family so it's about time we get out and have some kind of a family getaway so we're not sure how the weather is gonna be for the next few days around here in the Gulf Coast uh, it looks like Louisiana and uh, other states, uh, maybe even part of Florida, uh, along the Gulf Coast there, Alabama, everybody, they're going to be getting quite a bit of rain with this tropical depression. It hasn't formed into a named storm yet. Uh, just watching the news forecast this morning. Second gear, Let's see if it does it. Yep. Um, it's apparently already dumping lots and lots of rain over in Louisiana, New Orleans area. Uh, we might get some of the outer rain bands here in Houston. Uh, I'm not sure about the duration of this guy, how long it's going to take to blow inland and dissipate. But my point being, if the weather calms down, uh, my son and daughter and I have talked about uh, doing a little uh, road trip down to either Matagorda Bay or we might even go much further south, go down to uh, Corpus uh, Padre area take a little couple day beach vacation down there and if we do that we'll probably take the bikes so I would uh, you know, we'll travel light we won't need to take much with us uh, I don't know if we'll beach camp or not but um, my daughter and I could ride on the Riker and uh, my son can take one of the other bikes we'll see or we could just do uh, the PCXs and do a a scamping trip. We'll see. I don't know how long my daughter would be able to tolerate the uh, sitting on the PCX. It's a pretty long ride to go down to Corpus. 
in a car from here uh, it's five hours I want to say something like that and then uh, maybe a little over that and then going further down to say North Padre that's uh, that's a good six and a half seven hour car ride so on the PCXs it would be probably a little bit longer because we're not traveling at such high speeds but that would be an adventure my work is stacking up all at once here so it's making it hard for me to get away uh, this is normally a pretty busy time of year for me anyway because uh, summer break uh, I manage a few private schools and uh, things like that for their network infrastructure and summertime is when we can do a lot of our maintenance and upgrades and things like that because the uh, workload is lower inside the organization so everybody's going so I've gotten a few of those projects done but there's still quite a few uh, large ones lingering out there and now the time is uh, starting to get short and of course you know this malware crypto bug that I've been fighting uh, for one of my customers and uh, I've got a few others who have had similar cyber attacks over the last couple weeks so it's getting busy I don't mind being busy I just don't want to be uh making money because of the bad guys you know it's uh, not really a great way to make a living it makes me feel guilty so the uh ride vlogs and uh other youtube postings have kind of slowed down a little bit lately and i hate to keep anybody waiting that's interested in watching the content uh, i've just been really tied up with work and the family issues you know trying to get my wife packed and out of town for the three or four weeks that she's in Brazil and uh, with all the other workload going on it's just been hectic I have recorded quite a few vlogs I just haven't posted them uh, I don't know I'm kind of dull right now on uh, the content I just I don't think it's interesting although several other people and you know, viewers have requested that I post some more ride vlogs I, think. <laughs> I, I don't know what people are interested in watching I do this every day anyway, regardless of whether I'm videoing it or posting it or not. Uh, it's not always glamorous or entertaining, but you know, occasionally there's some interesting tidbits of info or uh, new developments that might be of interest to people. I had one viewer request I do another uh, R1 ride vlog. Uh, I haven't taken the R1 out in a while because the rear tire is getting a little crunchy, crispy on it. Uh, it doesn't have enough traction for the amount of power that bike is putting down. <laughs> and there's been a, a raging uh, discussion or debate on how much uh, power my R1 is making. Um, all I know is the uh, previous owner had stated that it had uh, 188 uh, rear wheel horsepower on the dyno, somewhere in that ballpark. And I don't doubt it. Uh, I've ridden some pretty fast bikes, and that one is definitely up there at the top of the stack. Uh, it's just not a... It's not an in-town bike. It's got too much power. It's too... Too... Fl uh, I don't know. Too flirty uh, on the throttle response. Uh, it's just a little too aggressive. It's always trying to kill you. And when I'm in the right mood, I don't mind that. I just uh, I don't feel like fighting that all the time or uh, feeling like I'm doing the running of the bulls at Pamplona. It's kind of like the Riker, I guess. I've got to be in the right mood to ride it. The Riker would be a great everyday commuter, everyday everything, save two issues. The fuel economy is pretty poor, and... Uh, the handling, the you know, the constant wandering around, especially at highway speeds, and most of the commutes that I need to do will be, you know, highway up there in the HOV or the mainlands or whatever. So uh, those two things keep me from riding it all the time. Uh, I've got to be in the right mood to be on it and not get pissed off at it. Uh, it's just a, a constant mental chore and just one more thing to worry about in dangerous frantic traffic, uh, you know, trying to keep the machine in line and doing what you want it to do. Uh, it's just one more fight. So if I'm in the right mood to ride fast and be a little aggressive, then yeah, I'll take the Riker and 
twist the wrist and have a little fun with it. But for the day-to-day -day grind, me, you know, not really my speed. If I could get that alignment sorted out, I'd, I could overlook the fuel economy. <laughs> it's just, it needs to do what I want it to do when I want it to do it and stop misbehaving. I've been so busy I haven't followed up on that uh, alignment issue again. Uh, one of the forum members over at Spider Lovers, uh, he resides here in Texas, uh, down in the, I guess the eastern part of Texas. Ty no, I don't know. I think he mentioned that his uh, dealer's in Tyler, Texas. So uh, I may take my bike over there and have them see if they can do the alignment because he said they got his sorted out perfectly. It doesn't dart around. It doesn't have any tracking problems anymore. Uh, and he's also got a rally. He was one of the first early test pilots like I am. Uh, so he said that his... Uh, handling and uh, behavioral woes got fixed by his dealer so I would be willing to ride all the way out there take a road trip and go uh, have them take a crack at my rifle and I don't mind paying out of pocket for it you know, 100 bucks 200 bucks whatever it is it's pocket change considering the uh, convenience factor if it were to be uh, resolved so back to the uh, 15 tooth upgrade on this uh, it is getting very, very good gas mileage uh, with this 15 tooth upgrade and my normal mixed commute routine. I would say it's probably up in the 150 mile per gallon range now, uh, as long as I'm not up on the highway just flogging it at wide open. Uh, if I'm doing the mixed surface street and uh, light highway stuff, you know, 50 to 55 miles an hour, uh, the fuel economy appears to have jumped about uh, I would say close to 10 points. Uh, I'll know more as the numbers roll in on uh, Fuelie as I get a few more miles on this setup. But it's uh, it's impressive. The lower three gears are definitely more rideable. Uh, they pull longer. The motor's a little more relaxed. They just feel like, you know, those lower gears are more useful now. Um, fourth gear is more of a uh, overdrive at this point. It does still pull well as long as you're in the torque peak, but once you get over the torque peak, which is around 5,000 RPM or something, uh, it doesn't have quite enough power to pull through the 60 mile an hour barrier, as I detailed in my uh, install slash review video. So, I don't know, I'm, I'm still of a mixed opinion on it. I don't need to necessarily be able to go 60 plus on this thing all the time so it might be a worthwhile trade-off to stay with this 15. Um, if I keep it on there for any serious length of time or permanently I'll probably go ahead and buy the uh, Kitako Speedo healer uh, the speedometer uh, regearing fixer or whatever it goes in line on the speed sensor and uh, it just kind of recalibrates the pulses to where you can adjust for different tire sizes or uh, gear changes to you get the right number of pulses per minute that are, or pulses per second that are fed to the uh, ECU to run the speedometer and the ABS and everything else. So I'll probably do that. That way my speedometer is more accurate and helps with mileage tracking and everything else because right now it's reading about three miles per hour low. Pessimistic. So uh, I'm actually going a little faster than the speedometer says, which means I'm not getting accurate fuel mileage when I do my calculations. I have to add about 4% to that number. 5%. Okay. But uh, I still haven't done my 1,000 uh, mile owner review. 1,000 miles goes by so quickly for me. and I'm putting thousands of miles down a week uh, across this one and other vehicles so those uh, little deadlines slip by me pretty quickly um, as far as my impressions on this thing as a, an around town you know just general run around bike and uh, a light commuter man I cannot say enough good things about it I, I guess if you want to call me a Honda fanboy yeah 
I'm the poster child. I really, really like Hondas, and it's not that I'm partial to the brand because of the, uh, the brand name. I'm partial to them because they engineer good machines. Uh, the fit and finish is very good on them. Uh, they don't have mechanical issues. They just work. Uh, so there is something to be said for that. And, uh, you know, every Honda that I've owned, whether it's a car or a motorcycle, it just, I don't, know, I don't have any problems with it. Uh, I've got little, you know, ergonomic issues or little, uh, you know, sometimes fit and finish issues that annoy me, but they're not uh, showstoppers. Uh, I don't have stuff rusting all over the bike and, you know, I won't name any names right now. <laughs> but, yeah, they just, they're just great machines. And uh, this thing for a budget bike and you know a lot of people argue that budget moniker because it's fairly expensive for what you get you know thirty seven hundred dollars basically thirty six ninety nine plus the setup and the taxes and all that so you're looking at about forty five hundred dollars out the door maybe a little less um so it's not cheap but it is a budget bike uh compared to most other machines out there and the uh utility of this thing it, it is no wonder Honda has sold over 100 million of these things it's just such an easy bike to use it goes anywhere it does pretty much anything as long as you don't have any expectation of going really fast uh, these things are just workhorses and so simple and so livable to use and operate it's, it's just amazing So the comfort, you know, it is a little cramped. Uh, I'm sure taller people would have more of an issue, longer legs, that sort of thing. Uh, but once you get used to the seating position, it's not hard to adjust to it. Uh, is it as comfortable as my PCXs or my larger bikes? No, because there's not as much leg room. The, the rider triangle is slightly more cramped. Uh, but is it livable and useful? Yeah, absolutely. I can deal with it. But I'm a short guy, again, you know, I'm, I'm 5'7", 155 pounds, uh, 170, loaded up, you know, uh, my riding weight's about 170 pounds, so uh, for my size and my weight, this thing fits great, no problems. I don't need to ride a bike with, you know, 100 plus horsepower every day, especially for the kind of commuting and riding that I do is just wasted power, wasted fuel. I think USA riders, uh, even people, you know, cagers, whatever, just everyone in general, everyone's caught up on the bigger, better, faster uh, mentality, and they're just losing focus on, is it really necessary? No, it's not. If you want to get down to what's absolutely necessary, all you really need is a bike or your own two feet and a pair of tennis shoes. But to be practical and get around, this is about all you need. Maybe something just a tiny bit faster uh, so it can fit multiple roles, you know, be able to do serious highway duty and that sort of thing. But it gets down to what is, uh, what is really needed to accomplish the job. If you need to dig a post hole in your backyard, do you need to go rent an excavator and a you know, backhoe or something to do it? No. Can you do it with that tool? Yeah. Is it going to make a mess? Yeah. Is it going to be wasteful? Yeah. It's got to figure out where your uh, priorities are. And for me, having fun and being reasonably efficient uh, is my goal. Uh, as many miles as I put down, I've always got that uh, fuel economy bug nagging me in the back of my brain going, geez, do I need to be in the car right now getting 26, 28 miles to the gallon, putting down a you know, 200 mile day. How much money is that costing me? I could do this on the cub or on the bike, you know, whatever. Spend two bucks. Three bucks. Versus you know, 15 or 20 dollars in the car. It adds up. So I think after today's uh, commute, I'll be ready for my next oil change. 
it'll be right out 1500 miles I took my sticker off I didn't print another one but I know where I need to be it was at 1500 so uh, I'll do my oil change at 1500 and then again at uh, probably 3000 that way I can get on an even marker uh, and then I always change these smaller bikes at uh, about every 2,000 miles, no more than 2,000 miles. It's just not quite enough oil in that sump to uh, withstand the kind of abuse that the little air-cooled motor gives it. I guess one of these days, if I was really interested in the, the science behind it, I could send off an oil sample to... Uh, one of the analysis labs, uh, I could do a, a 1,000 mile tap and then a 2,000 mile tap, uh, you know, just pull out a small sample of the oil each time and uh, send it off and see what the wear characteristics and oxidation and all that stuff of the oil is. But oil is cheap, motors aren't. I don't mind spending seven bucks, eight bucks, whatever on a quart of high quality synthetic and just changing it out early it's no big deal only takes a few minutes on this bike and uh, it's cheap insurance to keep that engine purring for a lot longer so again time and weather permitting i want to tear into the cub and do a couple of my other projects uh, to kind of round out my commuting and safety chores on this thing uh, put my conspicuity lighting on the front and the denali dms and uh, run my phone power uh, USB charger down there off the battery. And just a couple of other little minor things. Uh, replace this leg shield that got scratched up. Aww. After that, I, there's not much that I want to do to the Cub as far as uh, modifications or upgrades. Just use it and ride the heck out of it. The things that I'm doing to it are more for safety and uh, practicality, usability than anything else. I don't normally go for uh, aesthetic upgrades, stuff that's just on there for looks. I don't care for it. Uh, it's just flash with no function in my book. So this is kind of borderline <laughs> uh, it does have function enough to you know make me want to keep it just to you know break up the wind pressure on my chest and whenever i take my gloves off i can toss them up here on the dash and they don't slide off the front of the bike that kind of thing um, so it has a little bit of practicality to it but it's not nearly as uh, effective as a, a larger screen would be and then when it gets closer to uh, cannonball runtime i'm still considering doing the oil cooler uh, and filter kit, eliminating the spinner. Uh, I haven't seen a kit that's designed specifically for the Cub yet because it's got a lower, a different lower case. Uh, even the Monkey has a similar case to it, different than the Grom. But most of the oil cooler and filter kits that are made for the Grom can probably also work, but that lower case is a little bit different on the Cub than it is for the Grom or the Monkey or anything like that. So I'm not sure if the cover uh, is interchangeable or not because this thing has the centrifugal clutch on it versus a uh, regular clutch. So that, uh, that right side cover might have some differences. And then the mounting location will be a trick too. Uh, there's not a lot of room down there to mount a cooler so I'm not sure where it would fit. Uh, there's not very much clearance behind the rear of the, the front tire. Uh, there are plenty of mounting points that it could be adapted to off the leg shield uh, posts, but I don't know. I have to see if anybody else does it and kind of take their lead. But I think for the, the cannonball run, it would be a good idea because <laughs> this motor is going to be living its life at wide open throttle for roughly 8,000 miles. The only silver lining there is the top end uh, rebuild kit or you know pieces for this are just silly dirt cheap. You can buy a cylinder, Honda OEM cylinder, for like $37. The piston is like $8. The ring set, another $8. Uh, as long as you don't have to get into the bottom end, the upper rebuild, uh, top end rebuild on it is very cheap. 
for valves, valve job, that might get tricky. I think the head might be a little expensive, but uh, as long as you don't have to get into the valves uh, or do a valve job on it, then you can rebuild this thing on the side of the road pretty much. So at my current mileage uh, burn rate on this bike, just for my commuting chores and playing around, it looks like I'm on track for about uh, 12,000 miles a year on it, maybe a little less. Uh, with just my current riding duty. So that means by the time the Cannonball Run comes around, this bike will probably have about 10K on it, maybe 12K. And, uh, well, no, it would have more than that. It would probably be closer to 14K. Uh, so by the time that run finishes, it'll be uh, quite a bit more, 20,000 and change. My mileage uh, on this is nothing compared to some of the guys over in the, in Europe. Uh, I can't remember where they're from exactly. There's a couple of guys on the uh, on Instagram and uh, YouTube. They've already been touring theirs. They got theirs in late 2017, early 2018, something like that. Uh, so they've had them for a year and change, and they've already laid down serious miles, you know, 18, 20,000 miles on them uh, in that amount of time. So that's that's a lot of riding. So I don't think I'm going to have the highest mileage cub out there, but I do plan to ride this thing constantly. I'm very interested in seeing the longevity of the uh, the motor. Uh, I didn't start the test scientifically if, I, if that was my goal at the outset. Um, I should have pulled the plug and done a compression test on the motor. Uh, I'll probably do that sometime here in the near future. Uh, you know, let's say the 2,000 mile mark or something like that. I'll try to get a compression test uh, on the motor and figure out where it's at and I'll compare that kind of to the relative fuel economy and uh, uh, it's not burning any oil so there's no oil consumption rate to speak of uh, and then the uh, as the miles pile on you know maybe 8,000 miles 12,000 miles every 4,000 miles or so I'll do another compression test and see how the motor is doing over time without opening it up and doing a physical inspection and putting calipers on it, uh, putting my micrometer in there and measuring the wear. Uh, so I wonder over, you know, 20,000 mile lifespan how it's going to do. Oh, there it is. I knew there was a Walmart over here somewhere. Couldn't quite remember. Stop and pick up a Whataburger biscuit this morning for breakfast. Haven't been there in a long time. Turn off for breakfast anyway. If you're going that way, I'll go this way. It's hard stand. So nice. Alright, breakfast is in the backpack. I'm still rocking the backpack on the cub because I don't have uh, my pan air solution on here yet. So many projects, so little time. I'm slowly getting reacquainted reaccustomed to wearing a backpack, but I still don't like them. It's just uh, one more encumbrance that I don't like on my body while I'm riding. This is a fairly calm work commute. I like it. Huh. Got some kind of a camera rig car. It says Neuro, N-U-R-O, I think is what it said. It's not Apple, it's not Google, it's Neuro. Well, whatever that map thing is, I'll probably show up on that. Yeah, it does that second gear okay. 
it's a little uh, a little pokey, but it does it. Hey, here's the camera car. Let's see if I can uh, video bomb them, photo bomb them. might be one of those self-driving cars. I'll bet that's what that is, because it had cameras along the sides, too. So that must be a uh, self-driving car, not a normal camera rig. That's a bad place to stop. All right, well, I'll shut it down now and uh, we'll rejoin you all later this afternoon.